The world is upside down. What was once considered wrong is now seen as right, and what was right has become wrong. Believe it or not, the Bible has already warned us about this. Our conscience, this sacred gift from God that distinguishes us from all other creatures, is under attack. Are you ready to find out how and why? In this video, we will explore a truth as old as humanity. Let's dive into the essence of our existence, that divine gift that God implanted within us when he created us. This divine spark allows us to distinguish right from wrong, good from evil, without anyone needing to teach us. But something sinister is happening, people are changing, and it is not for the better. We are seeing an increasing number of people who, although they identify as Christians, no longer blink at sin. They have become insensitive, complacent, and apathetic to moral transgressions. What happened to our conscience? Why are we drifting away from Christ's teachings? This is a spiritual crisis that cannot be ignored. The gift of conscience. When God created man, he implanted something extraordinary, our conscience. This divine spark makes us recognize goodness and evil without teaching. Since ancient times, the conscience has served as an internal guide, a reflection of God's moral character within each of us. It differentiates us from other living beings, giving us the unique ability to evaluate our actions and motivations. The conscience does not develop only with experience or age, it is an intrinsic characteristic present in us from birth. This innate quality allows even a small child to know when they have done something wrong, even before being taught about morality or ethics. This innate ability to distinguish right from wrong is a powerful testimony of God's love and wisdom in creating us. According to Romans chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, our conscience can be influenced and shaped by our choices and environment. Andro 2.39 When we cultivate a life of righteousness and seek to live according to divine precepts, our conscience is strengthened and becomes more sensitive. Ignoring or disrespecting this internal compass dulls our moral perception, making us insensitive to God's voice speaking through it. As written in 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 19, the importance of conscience in Christian life cannot be underestimated. It not only guides us, but also calls us to moral responsibility. When we err, the conscience calls us to repentance and the pursuit of forgiveness. It reminds us that we are responsible for our actions and must live in a way that honors God and respects others, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. The scriptures often mention the conscience as a crucial component of faith and obedience to God. For example, in Romans chapter 2, verse 15, Paul speaks about how God's law is written in the hearts of men, with the conscience acting as a witness. This passage underlines the universality of conscience and its function as a means through which God communicates with us feelings of conscience. Think about how you feel when witnessing an act of kindness. Your conscience silently celebrates, and you experience joy and inner peace. This reflects the divine nature that resides within you, reacting positively to what is good and just. In contrast, when witnessing an injustice, your conscience cries out in protest, generating a feeling of discomfort and anger. This is your inner being recognizing and responding to evil. The conscience is an intricate and powerful mechanism designed by God to guide us in our daily interactions. It operates silently but decisively, influencing our emotions and behaviors. When we do something good, our conscience rewards us with joy and satisfaction. This is a sign that we are aligned with God's moral principles as indicated in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 16. When we commit a mistake or sin, our conscience reacts with disapproval. These feelings of guilt or remorse indicate that we have strayed from the right path. The physical reaction, such as a lump in the throat or inner restlessness, 
is a tangible sign that we must correct our course. It is God's way of calling us back to the path of righteousness, as described in Psalms 32 verses 3 and 4. These reactions of the conscience are universal and transcend cultural and religious barriers. Regardless of where we live or our background, conscience gives us an innate sense of morality. This truth is a testimony to the power and wisdom of God, who equipped us with such an essential tool for life. As mentioned in Romans chapter 9 verse 1, the response of our conscience can be influenced by various factors, including our education, environment, and personal choices. Ignoring or justifying wrong behaviors repeatedly desensitizes our conscience. This gradual process can lead to a situation where our wrong actions no longer affect us as they did before, according to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, changes in society. Something worrying is happening in the world today. Many people who identify as Christians have become insensitive to sin. Apathy and moral complacency are spreading and repentance is becoming rare. This change is visible at all levels of society, from personal life to religious institutions. As predicted in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5, secularization and the pressure to conform to worldly standards have led many to compromise their moral values. Television, the internet and social media constantly bombard individuals with messages that normalize sin and celebrate behaviors contrary to biblical teachings. This constant bombardment has an anesthetizing effect on the conscience, making it easier to ignore internal warnings calling us to repentance. According to Ephesians chapter 4 verses 17 to 19, the relentless pursuit of material success and social recognition has led many to justify immoral actions. The fierce pressure to succeed at any cost can lead people to make decisions that violate their consciences. Over time, these compromising choices desensitize the conscience, making it increasingly difficult to discern right from wrong. As Jesus warned in Matthew chapter 6 verse 24, churches have a growing tendency to dilute messages about sin and repentance to attract and retain more members. To appear more inclusive and welcoming, many congregations avoid discussing difficult moral issues, preferring to focus on messages of prosperity and self-help. This deviation from the fundamental doctrines of Christianity contributes to the formation of consciences insensitive to sin. According to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, the lack of preaching about repentance and the need for a holy life results in a generation of believers who do not fear sin. They become accustomed to living in a way that dishonors God without feeling the urgency to repent. This creates a dangerous cycle where the absence of repentance leads to greater insensitivity to sin, deepening the spiritual crisis further, as described in Hosea chapter 3 verse 19. We are witnessing a change in how Christians respond to sin. Instead of being shaken and moved to repentance, many now treat sin with indifference, a clear sign of a seared conscience. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 1 and 2, this is a dangerous spiritual state that threatens the integrity of the Christian faith. Spiritual crisis. This state of affairs is alarming as a conscience that does not convict us of sin indicates a deep spiritual crisis. The loss of this essential moral guidance is a sign that we have dangerously strayed from Christ's teachings. A seared conscience damages our relationship with God and negatively affects our ability to live according to Christian principles, as written in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. When the conscience loses sensitivity, the individual begins to justify and rationalize behaviors contrary to God's will. This gradual process of moral desensitization can lead to a downward spiral where sin becomes increasingly acceptable and less problematic. 
This is especially dangerous for Christians as it undermines the foundations of faith and weakens the testimony of the gospel as mentioned in 1 John chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. The spiritual crisis caused by a seared conscience is evidenced by a lack of genuine repentance and growing indifference to sin. The scriptures clearly state the need for a clean and sensitive conscience to maintain a healthy spiritual life. In 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 19, Paul encourages believers to keep faith and a good conscience, warning that neglecting this can lead to the shipwreck of faith. An insensitive conscience can lead to a false sense of spiritual security. Many may believe they are in a good relationship with God simply because they participate in religious activities or attend church regularly. However, according to Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23, these practices can become empty formalities without an active conscience, leading to repentance and correction. To combat this spiritual crisis, Christians must continually seek spiritual revival and the renewal of the conscience. This involves a dedication to studying the scriptures and seeking the Holy Spirit to illuminate and correct areas of moral compromise. Humility and a willingness to repent are essential to maintaining a sensitive and aligned conscience with divine precepts, as indicated in Psalm 139 verses 23 and 24. The spiritual crisis resulting from a seared conscience is a serious threat to the integrity of the Christian faith. We must be vigilant and proactive in cultivating a clean and sensitive conscience, allowing the Holy Spirit to guide and correct us continually. Only in this way can we live in a manner that honors God and reflects the true essence of the gospel according to Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. The role of the Christian conscience. Our conscience should be an active and urgent voice warning us against sin. When we face sin, it should deeply shake us, leading us to repentance and the pursuit of forgiveness and redemption. The Christian conscience is not passive, but a dynamic force that drives us to live according to the principles of the gospel, as described in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. The importance of conscience in Christian life is rooted in the conviction that we are called to be holy just as God is. This holiness manifests in our ability to recognize and act against sin. According to John chapter 16, verse 8, the conscience is the mechanism through which the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Conscience helps us maintain personal integrity and honesty in all areas of life. It calls us to transparency and truth in our thoughts and actions. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 12, Paul speaks about the importance of living with a pure and unblemished conscience, which reflects a genuine commitment to truth and justice. Maintaining a sensitive Christian conscience requires continuous effort and vigilance. Sin, by its nature, seeks to desensitize our conscience, making us complacent and indifferent. Therefore, it is vital to cultivate spiritual habits that strengthen our moral sensitivity. This includes meditating on God's Word, constant prayer, and active participation in the fellowship of the saints, according to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. The conscience is a precious gift that helps us live according to God's will. When we neglect its guidance, we risk straying from righteousness. According to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22, we need to be alert to the signs of a seared conscience and continually seek spiritual renewal to keep our moral sensitivity intact. An active and sensitive conscience is essential for an authentic Christian life. Through it, we can discern God's will and live in a way that pleases Him. We must value and cultivate this gift, allowing it to guide us in all areas of our lives and keep us firm in the faith, according to Romans chapter 14, verses 22 and 23. This is a biblical warning. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, we are warned about the dangers of a seared conscience 
resulting from repeated exposure to deceptive teachings and sinful behaviors. This leads to moral insensitivity and an inability to discern right from wrong. Paul's warning is clear. In the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. A seared conscience is a conscience that has lost its sensitivity due to repeated exposure to sin. When we ignore our conscience's warnings and continue in wrong behaviors, we begin to harden our hearts. According to Hebrews chapter 3 verse 13, this progressive hardening makes us insensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit, calling us to repentance and righteousness. The biblical warning about the conscience is not limited to ancient times. Today we are witnessing a similar phenomenon in our society. People are increasingly exposed to teachings that distort the truth and promote the acceptance of sin. The media, popular culture, and even some religious leaders are contributing to this moral desensitization, according to 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. To avoid a seared conscience, we must be firmly rooted in the Word of God. We must nourish ourselves with the Scriptures daily, allowing God's truth to renew our minds and strengthen our conscience. We must also be selective about the teachings and influences we allow in our lives, always seeking the guidance of the Holy Spirit to discern truth from error, according to Psalm 119 verse 11. Prayer and fellowship with other believers are equally important. Through prayer, we can ask God to keep our consciences sensitive and alert. Fellowship with other believers provides support and encouragement helping us remain firm in the faith and resist temptations that could lead to moral insensitivity, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. A seared conscience is a warning sign that something is deeply wrong in our spiritual life. We must take biblical warnings seriously and take proactive measures to keep our conscience clean and sensitive. Only in this way can we live according to God's will and avoid the dangers of a morally compromised life. According to 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5, the destruction of the innate system. A seared conscience results from voluntarily rejecting the truth and embracing falsehood. Repeated sinful behaviors destroy our innate self-governance system and our ability to discern and react to evil. The destruction of this innate system begins with small concessions. Initially, we may feel slight guilt or discomfort when making a mistake, but by justifying our actions, we begin to anesthetize our conscience. This process can be compared to repeatedly cauterizing a wound. Over time, the affected area loses its sensitivity, according to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 19. Deceptive teachings and false doctrines also significantly destroy the conscience. When we are repeatedly exposed to messages that distort biblical truth, our ability to discern right from wrong is compromised. This phenomenon is familiar. It was prophesied in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, where Paul warns about times when people will not endure sound doctrine. Another cause of the destruction of the conscience is the lack of genuine repentance. When we sin, the appropriate response is sincere repentance and the pursuit of God's forgiveness. However, when we ignore or minimize the severity of our sins, we weaken our ability to feel remorse. Repentance is crucial to maintaining a sensitive conscience aligned with divine precepts, according to Acts chapter 3, verse 19. The influence of modern society cannot be underestimated. We live in an era where morality is often seen as relative and traditional values are constantly being questioned. This environment can lead Christians to compromise their values and accept previously unacceptable behaviors. The pressure to conform to worldly standards is intense, but we must remember the words of Romans chapter 12 verse 2 which exhort us not to conform to this world, but to be transformed by the renewal of our minds. 
We are redefining moral standards. Society is redefining what is morally acceptable, adopting behaviors once considered sinful. This is clear evidence of how consciences are becoming seared. We are witnessing a profound change in moral standards, where what was once seen as wrong is now often celebrated and promoted. This redefinition is particularly evident in attitudes towards sexuality, honesty, and social justice. The media and popular culture play a crucial role in normalizing immoral behaviors. Movies, television shows, music, and other forms of entertainment often promote values that directly oppose biblical teachings. This creates an environment where sin is seen as acceptable or even desirable. The growing acceptance of immoral sexual behaviors, such as promiscuity and adultery, is a clear example of this change. What was once considered taboo is now considered normal or even a personal right. This change in attitude profoundly impacts how people perceive and react to sin. The conscience is desensitizing, making it increasingly difficult for people to recognize the gravity of their actions. Dishonesty is also becoming increasingly normalized in many areas of life, from business to politics. Lying and deception are often used to achieve personal goals. This creates a culture where truth is relative and integrity is sacrificed for success or material gain. The conscience repeatedly exposed to these practices becomes seared, losing its ability to distinguish between truth and falsehood. Social justice is another area where we see a redefinition of moral standards. While the Bible calls us to defend the oppressed and seek justice, we often see a deviation from these principles in the name of convenience or pragmatism. The conscience, which should guide us to act with compassion and justice, is suppressed by personal or ideological interests. To resist this redefinition of moral standards, Christians must stand firm in the Word of God. We must allow the Scriptures to shape our values and behaviors rather than conforming to the standards of this world. Prayer and fellowship with other believers are essential to strengthening our conscience and helping us live according to biblical principles. We must seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit to discern truth and act according to God's will. Sexual morality. Changes in attitudes towards sexual morality are evident in modern society. What was once seen as immoral is now often accepted and even celebrated. Practices such as extramarital sex and other forms of sexual immorality are becoming increasingly common and normalized by the media and popular culture. This change reflects a deep desensitization of the moral conscience. The Bible is clear about the standards of sexual morality, calling us to purity and holiness. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 18 to 20, Paul encourages believers to flee from sexual immorality, reminding us that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. However, contemporary society often ignores these teachings, promoting a permissive view of sexuality. To resist these cultural deviations, Christians must be vigilant. We must educate ourselves and our children in the biblical principles of sexual morality, cultivating a sensitive conscience that is aligned with God's will. Prayer and studying the scriptures are essential to strengthen our resistance to society's negative influences, truth and honesty. Dishonesty and manipulation of truth are prevalent in many areas of modern life. From business to politics, lying and deception are often used to achieve personal goals. This trend reflects a seared conscience where integrity is sacrificed in favor of success or material gain. The Bible calls us to live with honesty and integrity. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25, Paul encourages believers to abandon lying and speak the truth to one another. However, modern society often sees truth as relative, creating an environment where dishonesty is acceptable or encouraged. To maintain a conscience sensitive to truth, Christians must diligently seek honesty in all areas. 
we must be examples of integrity, resisting the temptation to compromise our values in exchange for temporary benefits. Prayer and fellowship with other believers are fundamental to remaining firm in the truth. Biblical stories of seared consciences. The scriptures provide numerous examples of characters whose consciences were seared. Cain, Jezebel and Herod are just a few of the many who strayed from God's ways, allowing their hearts to harden against the truth. These stories serve as powerful warnings about the dangers of ignoring the voice of conscience. The story of Samson and Delilah is particularly illustrative. Delilah, driven by greed and betrayal, repeatedly tries to discover the secret of Samson's strength. Her persistence in deceiving and betraying Samson reveals a completely seared conscience, insensitive to the gravity of her actions. This example shows how repeated exposure to sin can lead to the destruction of conscience, the betrayal of Delilah. The betrayal of Delilah against Samson is a classic example of a seared conscience. Motivated by promises of wealth, she manipulated Samson, exploiting his weakness and trust. Her willingness to deliver Samson to his enemies without remorse demonstrates a deformed morality. Delilah betrayed Samson and showed total insensitivity to the suffering she caused. Her story is a sad reminder of the devastating consequences of a seared conscience. When we allow sin to harden our hearts, we become capable of acts of betrayal and cruelty without feeling guilt or remorse. The importance of a living conscience. A living and sensitive conscience is essential for the Christian life. It helps us discern right from wrong and calls us to repent when sinning. Maintaining our living conscience requires a continuous pursuit of holiness and a willingness to allow the Holy Spirit to guide and correct us. Resisting the temptation to desensitize our conscience is a constant challenge. We must be vigilant, cultivating spiritual habits that help us remain sensitive to God's voice. Prayer, Bible study, and fellowship with other believers are essential to keeping our conscience alive and aligned with divine precepts. Changes in attitudes toward wealth. The relentless pursuit of wealth and material possessions can easily sear our conscience. When we place material gain above spiritual values, we risk becoming insensitive to the needs of others and the demands of justice. The Bible warns against the dangers of loving money, reminding us that greed is a form of idolatry. To avoid having our conscience seared by materialistic pursuits, we must cultivate an attitude of generosity and stewardship. We must recognize that everything we have comes from God and should be used for His glory. The regular practice of generosity, both in our time and resources, is a powerful way to keep our conscience sensitive to the needs of others and God's priorities, forgiveness and reconciliation. Forgiveness is a central practice in Christian life, essential for maintaining a pure heart and a sensitive conscience. The lack of forgiveness leads to bitterness and resentment, eroding our ability to love and live in harmony with others. Jesus calls us to forgive 70 times 7, reflecting God's infinite mercy towards us. Reconciliation is the next step after forgiveness. It involves restoring broken relationships and seeking peace. Maintaining a clean conscience requires a constant commitment to forgiveness and reconciliation. We must be willing to release hurts and seek healing in our relationships, following the example of Christ who forgave us while we were still sinners. Commitment to God in modern times. People are becoming more focused on temporary pleasures than their commitment to God. Technology and the fast pace of life often distract us, distancing us from a life of devotion and obedience. This spiritual neglect can lead to a seared conscience towards God. Renewing our commitment to God requires reorienting our priorities. We must pursue a deeper relationship with God above all other activities. This includes dedicating time to prayer, studying the scriptures, and fellowship with other believers. 
Maintaining a constant focus on God helps us cultivate a sensitive and receptive conscience to His guidance. Love for darkness. The tendency to prefer darkness over light is a characteristic of sinful nature. In John chapter 3, verses 19 and 20, Jesus describes how men love darkness more than light because their actions are evil. This love for darkness can lead to the erosion of moral sensitivity, making us indifferent to truth and justice. To combat this tendency, we must continually seek the light of Christ. This involves living according to the truth, confessing our sins, and allowing the Holy Spirit to transform us. The regular practice of self-examination and repentance is crucial to keeping our conscience sensitive and aligned with God's will, deception and self-deception. Self-deception is a constant danger in spiritual life. It is easy to convince ourselves that we are living correctly when, in fact, we are straying from God's ways. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 reminds us that the heart is deceitful above all things. Spiritual complacency can lead to self-deception, where we believe we are spiritually healthy when we are not. To avoid self-deception, we must be relentless in our pursuit of truth. This involves the willingness to confront our sins and weaknesses, allowing God's Word and the Holy Spirit to reveal areas that need correction. Living a life anchored in God requires honesty, humility, and a constant willingness to change. A call to vigilance. In a world where moral sensitivity is constantly being eroded, the urgency of maintaining a living and alert conscience has never been greater. We are called to be vigilant, cultivating a life of prayer, obedience, and devotion to God. Conscience is a precious gift that guides us on the path of righteousness, and we must protect it diligently. Prayer, Bible study, and fellowship with other believers are indispensable tools for keeping our conscience sensitive. We must always be attentive to the warnings of the Holy Spirit, allowing Him to guide and correct us. Only in this way can we live in a manner that honors God and reflects the true essence of the gospel. Let us always be vigilant and proactive in our spiritual walk, keeping our consciences clean and sensitive to God's voice. We have reached the end of our video, and I hope you like it. If you're looking for inspiration, knowledge, and spiritual connection, don't let this opportunity pass you by. Subscribe to our channel now, leave your like and comment to strengthen our community. And if you want to help us continue sharing religious stories that touch hearts, become a channel member. Together we can make a difference and strengthen our spiritual journey. We're counting on you. We've left the link in the description of this video so you can become a member today. Continue watching videos about the history of the Bible. I will leave two recommendations here on the screen. God bless you. We will get to the next video.